Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to make a gear. Now the gear is really simple to make in Blender because it's symmetrical around the z-axis. It turns out you can go into user preferences and there's a whole bunch of gears you can just pop right into your scene without having to make one. But I thought it might be good practice to fool around with the spin tool a little bit more, loop cuts and so forth, and just practice designing a simple. Okay, today we're going to go ahead and start by making a gear by adding a circle. So I come over here to create. I'm going to add a circle. Notice it goes right to the center, and if I hit 7 on the number pad, I'm looking right down at the top of my circle, and I'm going to tab into edit mode and make sure I have a vertex down here selected. Now I can see that when I set this up, actually let me delete that and try it again. Uh, just to point out that when I do add a circle, you can control the number of vertices you want. So I set this to 36 since there's 360 degrees around the circle. I got a vertex every 10 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is start right in here, and I'm simply going to extrude this out on the x-axis to make a single gear tooth. Uh, that might be a little bit too far, so I'll bring this... Whoa, I don't want to do that. I've got my proportional editing on, so let me turn that off. I'm going to scale this down a little bit and uh, maybe grab him again on the x-axis. And I can tweak these verts. I think the main thing is I would like uh, the vertices uh, to be, or, or the line between these two vertices to be parallel to the line between the other two. So I'll bring this guy up a bit and this guy up. I also want him to be tapered. And so the key thing is I want to see this line and this line. I would like them to be roughly parallel. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. In any case, I'll select everything now, and what I want to do is delete everything but these four vertices, and so I'm going to select everything, deselect the ones I want to keep, then I go to delete, and that's what I have left. At this point, I'm ready to make a single gear tooth. If I go back and hit one, and uh, extrude this guy on the Y, sorry, the Z axis, uh, there is going to be a single gear tooth, and I'm going to be adding a subsurf modifier later, so I'm going to put in some loop cuts around this thing. And so uh, around these edges after my subsurf comes in, I want to want these teeth to maintain their shape. And so I'll put these guys all the way around here, and that looks pretty good. I think I'll also just put one here in the middle and here in the middle, and I can put one along this edge and I can put one along that edge. Now, I'm going to want this guy to be uh, kind of bigger at this end, and so if I click on here and I use my circle select, I can come in and I can choose all of these guys. And the point of this is that I'm going to extrude this out and change the shape a little bit. So once I have those guys, I'll say extrude on the X, and I'm going to scale him up. I'll extrude him on the X again, and scale him up again. And I can do something similar over here on this end. Uh, I think I'll take these guys, and uh, if I were just to extrude that straight out, it would kind of create a jagged edge there. But uh, instead, I'll turn on my proportional editing, and I'll come over here, and I will uh, grab that guy on the X, and um, with proportional editing, I thought I had proportional editing on. Yes, it is, okay. I'm gonna grab this guy and change the um, proportional editing fall off to spherical. And now I'll say uh, grab this guy on the x axis. And I guess I have my, I can't see my circle. There it is. Okay, so I had it way up. And I'm gonna bring it back down. So, um, hmm, you know what? I think if I put it back on vertex, that might be more helpful. No? Still not. Maybe if I just grab this one and uh, grab him on the X. Yeah. Okay. So I was looking for something a little bit more like that. So in any case, that's going to be a little bit rounded. Uh, maybe I don't want those guys out quite so far, so I can turn off my proportional editing and move those guys back. Same thing over here. In any case, this guy's getting pretty close, and so now I'm simply going to take that tooth and I'm going to rotate it. So go ahead and hit 7 to go up to uh, top view and uh, back out a little bit so I can see my origin. And now uh, if I go into edit mode and make sure I have all those vertices, uh, when I'm in edit mode, all the vertices that I have selected can be spun using the spin tool. So in the tools tab, I go over to tools and I say spin. And notice I have this guy set to 18. Since I had originally 36 vertices, now I go to 18. So these guys are going to be 
uh, showing up just 18 teeth uh, around the 316. In other words, I just took 36 and divided by 2. Okay, at that point, I can go ahead and uh, notice this guy's looking a little bit strange. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to, first of all, select everything and make sure anytime I spin, I remove doubles. I can see that I just removed 114 vertices. And now, as I come in here, this guy is still looking different than the others. Notice he's a darker shade. And so um, that's because I have uh, some normal problems going on. So I'm going to go to normals, I'm going to go to recalculate, and now that problem just goes away. Okay, so everything's still lined up around the center, around the origin, and so all I have to do now is I'm going to go into uh, edit mode again, I'm going to go to create, and I'm going to add a circle, and this time I'm going to bring my circle in just a little bit. Notice uh, since I added it in edit mode, it's now part of the same object, and so I'm going to bring him down just a little bit, and I'm going to extrude him on the z-axis, and that's going to be the beginning of my gear. Uh, hub, let's say. Uh, if I uh, extrude him and scale him in now, I can begin to make whatever shape I want. So I will um, scale him down a little bit on the Z, maybe scale that in, uh, extrude and scale again, uh, extrude and uh, let's say on the Z axis and scale him in, and then I'll say extrude on the see everything but the Z. So if you hit shift, well I didn't want to do that, let's go back. So I'm going to extrude and then I'm going to say shift Z and now that does not do what I want it to do at all. So let's go back here. Let's just scale him in. So extrude and then scale. He's going to go right in towards the center and now I'm going to say extrude and I'm going to go uh, straight down on the z-axis. I don't like how high this got, so i uh, just go ahead and come in here and I can deselect everything, uh, box select the top of this, all of those birds, just bring it back down. And so now I've got the basic shape. Now notice that this uh, is not touching, and so I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit larger. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my subsurf modifier for the whole object. These are two different um, parts of the same object, so that subsurf got applied to everything. And now as I come in here, tab back into edit mode, I can see that things got uh, just sort of bent around this cage, and so I'm going to need to add some more subsurf modifiers in here. I'll put one so it comes right out here to the edge, and I can uh, figure out what I want to do over here, maybe here, and I want this guy to be uh, right down the middle there. Uh, I don't mind the fact that this is rounded. In fact, I could even put another loop cut to make it more rounded if I want. And now I want to just increase this. Uh, so I can't do that in, in uh, solid mode or the whole thing will scale together. So I'll just go ahead with the center or with any vertex on this piece selected. I can hit Control L. And now this guy can be scaled outward. And I'll just kind of look and see how that looks with my, with my pieces drop this guy down a bit, and um, so that's looking okay. Uh, I think it might be good, I'm going to bump this up a little bit, um, this piece might come down a little bit, so if I come over here and I wanted to um, maybe grab that and just take uh, that guy, I could drop him down, make that a little bit more rounded, and uh, so on. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking so far. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I'll go ahead back into Tools, choose Smooth, uh, I bump that up again if I wanted to, but that is looking to me like a gear. Now the bottom of this is really not important to me. I don't think I'm going to be showing this in uh, the scene I intend to use this in, so what I can do is uh, deselect everything, box select this, uh, move this guy up, kind of up out of the way, and maybe this guy is sticking down too far. So I can uh, deselect everything, box select just the bottom, and I'll move that up as well. If I wanted to, I could just uh, extrude and scale that guy in a bit and um, keep that rounded off. Of course, with subsurf on, it's getting way too rounded. Let's just leave it like that. Okay, so there's my gear. I'm going to uh, make a little background. I'm going to take that off of here. So I go to my other layer. I hit M, <coughs> move this to the, any of these layers that I want to, 
and now it should be in the same layer. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me do that again. I'm going to select this guy, hit M, move him to this layer, and now if I return back to that layer, I've got a little background shape uh, that I will also set to smooth. Okay. So now I'm going to add uh, some kind of um, color to this, and so we could do something just really, really simple. Uh, if I come into my materials, I will add a uh, mixed shader, and the mixed shader is just going to have, uh, let's say, a, um, well, let's do a glossy, and um, maybe I'll just do two glossies. Okay, and so one glossy is going to be, let's say, very, very dark. Uh, with some roughness and the other glossy, I'll just give it a slight um, maybe yellowish tint. Let's see what he looks like now. If I come back into rendered mode, I can see that this guy has kind of a metallic look. I can play around with the glossiness of it. Uh, also, I can come into my previews over here in the rendering, and I can see that uh, my sampling, oh, my sampling set up 500. Okay, so that's looking kind of metallic. Now, I would like there to be kind of a lip. Sometimes I see this, and uh, after it's been uh, rendered, it looks very, very different to me. And so I'm just going to make one more change to this guy. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to tab into edit mode. And uh, I'm going to make a loop cut in here. And if I switch back to faces now, click off transparency, and I'll hit alt uh, tab here. And then I'm going to extrude this guy on the Z axis. And so that will come up. And again, I can uh, make those cuts a little bit more defined by adding loop cuts. Okay, let's see what he looks like now. If I come back into rendered mode, I can see that that maybe looks a little bit more like a gear. And that was pretty simple. So let's come back out and take a look and see what this guy looks like. If I come in here, I see that I've got a gear. Now I'm going to uh, tilt him up a little bit so we can do a kind of a picture of this guy. So uh, let's come back into solid mode uh, right here. Um, if I change this guy back into um, object mode, now I will rotate him uh, this way perhaps and uh, maybe grab him and move him up over here. I rotate him back. And so that is it. So that's it for the gear. And let's take one last look to see what he looks like rendered. And that is done. Pretty simple. Okay, bye-bye.